We're live. Mr. Clary, how's it going? Good. I got a hike in and the gym, and I had my first full day off since I can't remember where I did. I only did what I wanted to today. It was wonderful. I don't know. Oh, we were catching you earlier doing a video that lasted about an hour. Kind of looked like you were working. That was, I was going to go live with Jack Napier because I chose to. And he uh, he finished. He, he had a quick show. So it wasn't open. I'm like, well, I already logged in, so I might as well go do a video. So I did one. And then the kind, my kind audience gave me super chats as they typically do. <laughs> and that I'll never get sick of it, man. I'll never get they they pay for my living expenses just by donating super chats. And you know, it's it's not gobs of money, but it's enough to more than pay for gas or you know, my food and and whatever else I bought today. So it was it was a good morning and then then uh, yeah, I got out and I, I did a, a hike downtown Rapid City. It's called Cowboy Hill, and um, just did the whole thing. Hmm? We never went there during our no. Visit, right? It's it's that hill that splits Rapid City in two, and there's mm -hmm. a northern unit and a southern unit. This is the northern unit. It's got trails all over it, and um, you never think about it because it's always there in the background. But it's it's a pretty steep hill i mean you the trail anyway is and there's a ton of biking trails and everything so i just did a big old loop i got to the spine came down the other side and uh just a beautiful like 60 degree sunny day so it's very happy awesome that's good stuff man um well uh as you know um i just came from happy hour well clary knows this the audience Mr. texas get you hammered again uh, no, one Mr. Texas is actually the candidate's co-workers. And um, oh. we went there straight after work. And man, they had a lot to say about politics. And I was just kind of like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> did, uh, did you have to shut up and just let them blather yeah. on about being wrong? Okay. All right. They're, 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 let me guess. If we just had more money and it wasn't my money, then all the problems that aren't mine would go away. Is that kind of? Much to their credit, because I am in my Southern command, you know, the Texas, uh, they're actually making so much sense, man. Like, so they're on the other side of this. I didn't even have to say anything. I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. Yep. Wait, wait. So, so were they leftists or rightists? I'm, rightists. I mean, were they, they were rightists. Yeah, they oh, were, so you didn't have to yeah. say, oh, okay. I thought you made it sound See like they I mean? were dumb and they didn't know what they're talking about. Oh, no, absolutely not. Double-edged sword on this one in a positive way. It just, they made so much sense. And I laughed and said, well, let me tell you a couple of quick stories about where I live. And they just laughed their asses off. And yeah. yeah so it was a good one. Um, I heard the Macy's in Oak Park got uh, two Venezuelan immigrants robbed them of twenty eight hundred dollars worth of perfume. <laughs> so you heard about that? I heard about. It. I just think it's funny. The liberal white woman of the prestigious Summers voted it in, and there you go. There you. I don't go. know why it surprises me. You would have heard about that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I just it, it came up on the news thing, and I, I'm like, yeah, that's what's going to happen. No, uh, it won't well, happen here. Do you know why? Because everything is just pristine. The and store boring. owner would go gun after them is why. <laughs> That's what would happen. Because you can legally go out for 2800 Yep. 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 Um, but anyway, I so we did come from happy hour. I've been um, enjoying some beverages for the last few hours. So tonight's uh, beer, nothing too special. It's a simple Texas-based Shinerbach, 4.4%, courtesy of Rob Blauser, who actually brought a oh. case over this last time we hung out. Okay, so, cool. It's leftovers. Rob. He did the, mm -hmm. um, we can't see it. I got uh, the artwork of the. Did you hang it up? Hay bales. Yeah, the hay bales. Uh, I've had that for a while because I nice. like these. Yeah, he painted yeah. that. He's a fun dude. Uh, I'll be back here later in the month, and he and I might hang might hang out. I don't have Soon? time to go around, but yeah. Soon. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, I got a great topic to talk about tonight. But um, uh, the first thing I wanted to uh, mention, you remind me, you told me you have never been to Washington D.C. Like you just you never wanted to, or you never got. Around I to I was on. I was technically in Washington D.C. because I, I was visiting. Vince LaRosa of masculine geek fame yeah. <clears throat> and some other people. And that side of the highway I was on was DC and the other side was Maryland or something. So I have okay. technically been to DC. 
I do not want to go to DC. I know the Smithsonian and all the pictures you guys were sending were, were they, they look great. It looked fun. I wouldn't mind seeing the constitution, but I just don't care to go to DC. I, I really don't. It was, um, so I, I think I've told you, I lived there throughout most of my twenties. So I mm -hmm. hadn't visited there in over 12 years. So I, I just kind of felt like it was the right it would be a good trip. You know, she had never been there and, you, you know, we were walking around like the monuments and the museums and everything. Mm. Um, I just made a few notes about the trip and I got a story for you. Uh, the first thing is that you like to hike. And I can say if you ever did visit D.C. and just kind of checked out some of these sites, I, I think you'd actually enjoy it because it is a hike. You walk about five to six miles a day just being there. Like going okay. around everything. Yeah. Is it flat? You, it, it's relatively flat. Uh -huh. You know, I'm already seeing some people in the chat go, DC sucks. Yes, I know. I know. It's not, this is not a place I would ever live ever again. But to go back and visit and show someone who's never seen it, you know, it's mm. kind of fun. Um, but the other thing, actually, Clary, it did cross my mind. At first, I was like, Clary would hate this. But then again, maybe it wouldn't bother you so much. What do you think was present at every single museum we went to? And I mean, all of them, all. Now think, think at who's going to be every there. museum, uh, like a some kind of professional white collar. Yeah, like a like there'd be a representative from raise the funds to help the children, to, some kind of nonprofit representative. You're not too far off, middle schoolers. Lots and, oh. lots and lots oh, okay. and lots and lots and lots. That's fine. What they schoolers. they get to see the they get to go on the tour, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. This would have been my guess. Fat people. Yes, we saw plenty of. <laughs> we did see plenty of fat people. I I can't lie about that. Um, but it was a lot of middle schoolers, and yeah, on the surface, you're kind of like, you know, it's good. They need to be there. They need to learn about history and all this. But dude, they're so like noisy, and they're they they yes. just they don't really want to be there. So in a way no. they're just kind of in a way. And they were just like, it was just shocking, dude. How many, were you like, a perfect child when you absolutely were absolutely not? Okay. Absolutely well, absolutely not. I'm not saying I like middle schoolers. I mean, no one does, but <laughs> it, were they, were they any more misbehaving than other middle schoolers past? No. In okay. fact, the reason I brought it up because it made me wonder if you did visit, and you did, it was nothing but kids that were, you know, and I'm talking a swarm of them. Would it annoy you or would you just kind of roll with the punches on that one? It it would depend. Were they, could you escape them? Like, could you go to the next room or like, ah, I'm going to go to this museum and there won't be any middle school. No, they're just all over, huh? Dude, it was You couldn't like, go at night? You couldn't go like when it was their bedtime? They all close at five. All museums oh. closed at five and DC. So it's just, uh, yeah, you're, you're there. And no matter where we went and we went to a lot of places, the air and space museum, the archives, the museum of natural history, mm. dude, it didn't matter where the fuck we were. It was all middle schoolers. I, I all. would, I would, I would rule 40, 60. Is it, is it lessening my day technically yes but i'd rather have them there getting to see that stuff than not i would that would be yeah. a positive in my opinion even though it annoyed me but i would think in the grand scheme of universal balance i too must have pissed off a lot of people when i was a yeah. middle schooler in my presence so that is the price we all pay as we get to suffer future middle schoolers when we are adults at the end of the day, it was just sort of part of the scenery. So we we enjoyed it. But I, I'm not going to lie. We were both laughing like, I wonder if Clary would have like, you know, wanted to kill them or <laughs> well, were they were they dropping trow and taking a deuce in the or were they just acting like regular old annoying? They, they were just they were just acting like regular middle schools. But okay. I, I, I cannot overemphasize how many of them there were. Dude. Like I've never seen this many like teenagers. I wonder why they take middle schoolers and not high schoolers. So my theory, I was trying to, I was wondering about that too. I think because it was like fall break for a lot of the middle schoolers, both in the immediate surrounding DC area and across yeah. the country. So they were busing them in and, you know, flying them in. So I think they just do that like around the last week of October every year. That's when the middle schoolers okay. go see yeah. everything. So, but all week, man, it didn't matter where we were. It was, this is like middle schoolers. So. Um. 
but no, it was a really, really fun trip. And um, uh, I have to say, and I know what your preferences are in terms of where you like to visit and what you like to do. I do think you should do this at least once and like take the GF and, and just do it. He, yeah. Let me explain to you the problem with the east side of the country. <laughs> it's way the hell over there. Yeah. I, you all want me to go to Maine. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. that's like north and all the way over there. <laughs> I don't really have the energy. If I'm going to go out east, I'm going to visit Glorious Carl. Mm. I'm going to visit uh, even Vince at Masculine Geeks. I, I'm going to visit my friends. And, um, and, he, and it's not that I don't love my friends. I don't want to hang out with these people. It's just, I, I, no, come to Vegas in winter, you guys. It's cheaper and, and I'm getting old. It's not that I don't want to do it. That's. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy flying anymore? Did you enjoy no, the flight? I have no. a story for you, dude, from this trip, but please go ahead. <laughs> well, I just, I'm just, I don't want to fly out there for something that eh, it's all right, you know, but I, I would probably here. My day hike in Cowboy Hill going to the gym was more enjoyable than I can guarantee you that I probably see going to Washington, D.C. Okay. It would probably be cool to see the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. I mm -hmm. was excited, like when uh, what's her name, uh, your GF a candidate, uh, sent a picture of Mister Rogers sweatshirt. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you but, like my Ronald Reagan picture when we were in the? I like you know I like you stood by the South statue. Dakota yeah. statue, which is what a rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, is the, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, all right, but I'm not flying no three hours one way, three and a half probably, and then. Dealing with it, I don't want to. No, I want to sit and I got to play video games today, guilt free video games. I, uh, yeah, I'd rather do that than, than go out to Washington, D.C. That's all right. I, I absolutely do understand that. Mm. Um, so well, if you ever do get the inkling and you know, me knowing your GF, I do think she might enjoy it, but you know, I'd rather hang out with Mr. and Mrs. Elkins and have your mom um, ask me, well, <laughs> how many types of cheese do I want with what type of crackers? So I'd rather I'd rather do that because I think they're much more charming and endearing than than a trip to D.C. That's a strong what? statement. And speaking of charming and endearing, Atham. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's charming and endearing. OK, holy cow. <laughs> yeah. Terms are getting redefined. <laughs> um. <clears throat> But anyway, so it, it was a fun trip. And you mentioned something that we, you know, me and the candidate were both like, we never expected that to happen. That was pretty yeah. fucked up. So, so fight on, on the airline? Oh, well, it could have led to one. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're coming back again, you guys, United Airlines, just puke. Like, just don't. Um, <laughs> So we're coming back and we um, it just so happened, you know, the way the fare worked, you know, ex airlines are expensive. We had to have a stopover in Pittsburgh. OK, uh -huh. so we get off the flight in Pittsburgh. It was one of those small airplanes and um, she had her carry on right above like where we were sitting or like one in the front of us slightly like in front of us. All right. And I'm not really paying attention. The plane gets to the gate and, um, <laughs> and people are getting off. And all of a sudden she goes, oh. <gasps> I go, whoa, 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 what's wrong? She goes, Chad, I think that guy took my carry-on. Oh. And I go, I go, no, 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 no. It's just right above here. You it probably just looks like that. He's like, no, Chad, I think he really took my carry-on. So by the time we stood up, yeah, her carry-on mm -hmm. was gone. And so we had a bag that looked exactly like hers. Wow. So uh, we're just like, what the fuck do we do? So we immediately grab that one because we're like right. our best shot at getting her bag back is like getting Swap this bag right and like right. trying to run i mean dude like she sprinted because <laughs> her computer was in there like there was there was all kinds of shit in oh there sure where, yeah no I, I get it like yeah. that's the reason you put it in carry-on and uh, um mm. It was a boomer, as you can imagine, took the wrong fucking bag. Mm, and so we that. sprint down there. You know, I, I'm with the other bag. I'm kind of trailing behind. This is a connecting flight. We don't have a lot of time to get to right. our next flight, you know, home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, forget it. We couldn't find this guy. We didn't know what he looked like. We just knew that somebody took our bag. There was one thing that saved us. One thing. Her phone number was on the? The boomer's the boomer was smart enough to put his name and phone number on the bag. Oh, tag. good. Okay, good. On the bag you called him up. 
tried calling, got no answer. She tried calling multiple times, got no answer. So finally I text him. I'm like, hello, Ron. This is the guy sitting behind you. I believe you took our carry-on bag. Uh, we have a connecting flight. If this is your final destination, it is imperative that you call or text me, you know, one of us immediately. She did the same. So we're just standing. So the Pittsburgh airport, which I've never been to, it's got this little like you have to take this little tram to get to baggage sure. claim. Right, so right. we're just like standing there, not knowing what to do. Like this guy needs to get the fuck back to us. All of a sudden, it, you know, we don't know what he looks like. We don't know what age. 68 year old, you know, overweight, gray hair, you know, beard, Midwest accent. Oh my God, I'm so oh, sorry. God, I'm God. so sorry. I just and, fucked up your country and destroyed the finances <laughs> and social security, but you know, I wasn't done fucking over your generation just yet. I'm sorry about this. So this is why I felt like you would love this story. So, you know, so we're just and you know, we were relieved as fuck. We're like, oh well, you know, thank God. You must be I'm like, you must be Ron. Um yeah. so yeah. So he found us, we found him. And the next thing he says to us, well, I'm really glad because in my bag, I had $500 cash and all my medication. And I'm just kind of oh, like, medication, well, shit, maybe. Yeah. and I made the joke, maybe we should have kept your bag. And he was just like, really? Though, like he, he didn't he, get he, you. Yeah. <laughs> just, so yeah. Uh, so we nice. were able to exchange it. And then he had to gall because, you know, the candidate texted him too. He had the gall to like text her and be like, you know, sorry about that confusion. I feel bad. I think we, he goes, dude, he goes, I think we both learned something today. And I, we're both uh, yeah. just like, what do you mean we both learned? I, something? I, 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 uh, the boomers, y you, you can give up on the moralizing and lecturing the younger people. No one is listening to you. You can just stop with that and, um, just, uh, retire permanently and go away now. You're, your uh, what do they call it? Your legacy has been set. You're There's obsolete. No, you're, you're well. It's not that they're obsolete, but I mean they are. I mean they, maybe it's just a word. Yeah. But but you, you can now shut up because there's literally nothing you could say to change what you have done for most of your entire life. Yes, it's it's, it's cemented. So please shut up and don't talk. I think that, I think the country would benefit from that. That was truly the cherry on top. Was was him being like, well, I'm glad we both learned a lot. We're just like, you know what, dude? Fuck you. Did <laughs> you, you know? have time? Just get out and go and get your next flight. We we were able to make our right, connecting good, flight. We good. like it, it worked out well enough because this she was so like we were we stopped by a bar and we grabbed a drink because we had enough time to do that and she was yeah. really freaking out like she would have been yeah. fucked if her laptop yeah. had gone. Yeah. yeah. What um uh how many days were you in DC? We were there a week. Yeah. Okay. Whole so week. you couldn't have just gotten by with the Spear Airlines carry on bag with underwear <laughs> and socks. No, but I mean, right. at the, you know, ironically, this whole problem was because we were doing the smart thing and like carrying on our luggage. And this dumbass was just like, oh, this looks like my bag and just like grabbed it. it was right. I mean, a carry, like just a backpack that you, that you hold with you, you put underneath the seat. Like you don't put it up on the. Like, no, no man, this uh, never. Uh, we just we had too much stuff because I mean it was hot and then it was cold, so we're just yeah. like, okay, we got. You want me to fly to Washington D.C. after mm -hmm. this story? Uh huh. Okay. All right. That's... I didn't say fly. I just said I thought you should visit it one day. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so that was the only story. Uh, I mean, yeah, we had fun and everything. Uh, I just want to say DC is a fucking shithole in most places. Like there's homeless camps everywhere to get. Mm -hmm. So we were ordering coffee every morning from like DoorDash and Uber Eats because the goddamn Airbnb we were at had no coffee maker. So we're just like, what the fuck? Even though it said it had one. So there's a, a McDonald's about like a, a five minute walk around the corner. Right. Dude full of homeless tents i mean dry. really oh my god oh my god just uh so in this respect if you're going to visit dc pony up a little bit more and um just pay for accommodations because it's uh, oh, god damn what were you in a gentrified you're saying the area yes. you were before was a gentrified area how what was it beforehand was it a war zone if it's homeless down that's, that's gentrified? what's so funny we were in a particular part of northeast dc for those of you who know dc i did say northeast um <clears throat> back when i was there you know 
15, 20 years ago, you would have never gone there. You don't go to that area. However, right. you know, I had done a little bit of research and I'd heard there had been a shit ton of gentrification in that particular area. It wasn't far <laughs> from Union Station, which is, you know, a major hub like in D.C. And it got gentrified. I looked at the Airbnb. All the reviews were kind of like place is nice. Bit of a shady area, but nothing to worry about. Dude, this was like being in Chaz or Chop or whatever that Seattle. Really? Yeah, Chaz, it was Republic that, of Chaz. Yeah, it was that bad. And so the one morning where our, our I think it was Uber Eats that fucked us that morning. You know, believe it or not, Clary, not everybody is reliable uh, when it comes to, you know, ordering coffee and bringing it to you from an app. I don't know if that shocks you, but. Uh, well, it was, I. I I'm aware of it. I'm not that old, but I'll never do it. I just, <laughs> I, I, I draw the. I'd, I'd almost risk the homeless camp. Just say, all right, what's up? What's going on? I'd go I on mean, at like at nine a.m. when they're they're supremely hungover and not able to do it when they're weak. I'm going to go. This out when was it. Weak. This was at eight forty-five a.m. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's why and, they're weakest. And I was the hungover one, so you know the Canada's just like, oh, I'll go get it. It's just around the corner. She comes no. right back in three minutes. She goes, no, we cannot okay. do that. There we go. So me, Mister Cocky, I'm like, I live in Chicago. Fuck these guys. So I get my coat on. You know, I go out there. I did make it to McDonald's and I did make it back. But good lord, dude, like uh, druggies. I absolutely somebody was following me. I on the way I have a question for the women who don't need us. Uh, who's going to protect you from the these people that you voted in? <laughs> I want to know who's going to protect the women from the Democrat Frankenstein monsters they voted in. Because I don't, I'm not helping. I might help my grandma, but I'm not helping. <laughs> well, anyway, those were the two stories that I wanted to make sure you knew about in DC. Because, I, uh, um, you, yeah. you have done a tremendous salesmanship job of convincing <laughs> me to not attend. I am going to go west and south to Nevada, where I will enjoy another winter down in the warm climes of Las Vegas. I just want to go to Reno and Truckee again. And Atham, if you're still here, you know why. <laughs> I, we all know why. We all know why. <laughs> Uh, let's do some super chats. I got a good topic that I do want to get to. You, so. you got 14 super chats, Chad. Well, I think That's you know. That's crazy. Who... Look at that. Well, well you know hat who and Sure, yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly, I don't know exactly. if he counts. I mean, <laughs> if a hat and clog super chat's not on my channel, does it really count? You know, that kind of thing. You so. can even understand the symbolism that he leaves I, you in yeah. the Uh, chat. hat and clogs for two bucks. If math's so good, why hard? Answer tax, man. <laughs> Because as I just finished, oh, Clary, this week I've been doing a lot of, as I normally do, I've been doing a lot of consultations for people that watch your channel and my channel because it's November. Okay. I'm done with my you know work year. So I did. Is November I, consultation season? Uh, for me, it is because there's not much tax work to do. But oh, um, right. but I bring it up because to answer Hatton Clogg's question, is math so good? Why hard? Answer tax man. I finally had to just tell this one kid who was like, well, I'm scared of math. I'm scared of math. I'm scared of math. I'm like, dude, if you're that worried about doing math, this is not for you. You don't have to know. You're, this is not differential equations like right. Atham had to do. This isn't even really algebra yeah. two. But if math makes you this anxiety, you're not going to be able to work in tax. Do you, do you remember the time the two white guys didn't really ever use much more than college algebra? And then our Mexican <laughs> buddy is the one who had to go and do like math from hell. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Atham, I, I felt so bad for you when you told us about some of these courses. Um, but at the end of the day, it was worth it, I hope, for you. Which he's looking for a job, by the way, if anyone wants to hire our buddy. Yes, yes. <clears throat> uh, BFCZ8 Nap, five books. Good evening, gents. Good, e good evening, BFC. Good evening to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm. A couple more here. X runner 55 oh. attack of the yawn five bucks getting beat up because you own stupid policies is what your insurance won't cover tax deductible getting beat up because of your getting own stupid policies is, is what, what your insurance, insurance won't cover. Okay. Um, Oh, he must be talking about medical expenses, I'm guessing like he, uh, somebody who gets beat up by, um, some assailant or somebody over in, yeah, in yeah. Uh, D.C., all right? 
is what your insurance won't cover taxable. The answer is yes, it is. However, I have a qualification with that. Medical expenses are subject to 10% of your AGI, which only goes on Schedule A, which means you need to itemize with the double standard deduction from uh, tax reform. You need to have a shit ton of out-of-pocket medical expenses for it to benefit you. Was that concise enough? Very. Yes, even I understood that. Excellent. Sam Whiskey, most American name in America. Hey, Vlad, if a strong and independent woman were to buy Cappy dinner using her husband's credit card, is that considered a tax write-off? I'll speak for Clary on this. Yes, it absolutely is. Um, Clary has a business. And perhaps... Wait, wait. For her? No, for you. Oh, I'm sorry. If the woman wait. buys you... Okay, 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 okay. Chad Elkin, CPA, ladies and gentlemen, accurate and precise all the time. But attention some, to detail. All right, go on. Ed. Some slash problems. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, I understand the question, but hey, if that strong and independent woman has a business and she consulted with Clary about something related to her business, absolutely, that's a tax write off. Right. If she hired them. me, yes. If she hired yeah. me to consult her on her business, that would be a uh, that'd be a, a tax, but only fifty percent, right? Because meals and entertainment. Uh, as of twenty twenty three, yeah, it's back to fifty <laughs> right. for for twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two is a hundred because they want to encourage people going to restaurants because of the pandemic and everything. Right. But we're back to fifty percent. But um, yeah, if she just bought it because I was dicking her down, that wouldn't she wouldn't be able to write that <laughs> off. Yeah. I should link you up with some OnlyFans. No, no, that's all right. I, I enjoyed my my day today. Good. <laughs> uh, Brian Dupree, uh, another hiker in the field for two bucks. No tradey I know claims cash transactions except me. Really? Uh, tradey? You mean trades? No, no tradesman. Yeah. Okay. He, he um. So he's not. He's not entirely wrong about that, but I will say that the tradesmen that I, and one tradeswoman, you know, the trades mm. people I have, um, that's what they want to do. But as I advise them, the IRS or whoever has access to your bank account, business and personal. So you're going to really want to do this. I know it's tempting to be like, well, cash, I, I, I'm not going to claim one anything. of the, one of the first things we did as analysts in banking um, and we're not IRS agents is mm -hmm. to figure out what your income was. We just go look at all the deposits that went into your bank account one yeah. year because there it is. And then these, these, you know, my opinion about the average tradesman in the yes. United States, right? <clears throat> yeah. You guys aren't worth the bacteria on the shit on my <laughs> shoes. Uh, and you're not, uh, these idiots would, uh, I'm not paying taxes. Uh -huh. And then you dump a ton of cash into your bank account. It's like, no, you dumbass. You should hold on to the cash and pay cash expenses. Yes. You idiot. They'll go and they'll deposit. And I remember like, well, what's all this? Like, oh, that's all the cash I make. It's like, uh, so you don't have to pay taxes. Yeah. I'm like, well, what if you got audited? The first thing they're going to do is go here. Exactly. And, so, and then then they want a federally approved FHA loan where it's like, OK, so do you want me to report this to the feds that that's what your income is? Because I, oh, yeah. I to some of the trades people I have, I tried very hard to make to protect them from themselves. I still have a couple that have safes. Granted, we're in middle of Chicago, yeah. they have safes that they put all of their cash in and they just carry cash for their general expenses and everything. They basically try to make it invisible. Right. It's do quite cumbersome. Democrat? Yes, actually oh. they do. So they, for, they don't want to pay taxes, but they vote to raise their taxes and they vote to have people take their money away by force in public through the crime they keep elected. Okay, these are very intelligent people you have here in Chicago. I never even considered that. Yeah, they do vote Democrat. The, I've never heard yeah. of Democrat once they start making money, especially if they fail to make their estimated taxes. All of a sudden, it's a crisis. It's like, motherfucker, you're the ones that voted for this. Go eat a bag of dick and pay your taxes. This is what we were discussing before this at Happy Hour. Yeah. Um, that same thing. Quick shout out to Parker and... Jigazerp, good to see you guys. Uh, the next one down here is Hand Clogs again for two dollars. Cappy, if words free, why don't speak mind? <laughs> I speak my mind pretty darn good. Look at him I try to get under the two. Yeah, look at him try to get under the two dollar limit there. He, he does really good. He starts talking like a three year old. 
uh, yeah, I speak my mind and um, I, I take it up to the limit that YouTube will allow me to use. So we got to use stupid words. But yeah, if if you speak. If you don't use the bad words and your intention is to actually help people, not like rank hatred, but constructive criticism of which there's plenty to go around, uh, you will not run a foul. Well, OK, one of their blue haired, purpled haired whatever mentally ill sensors might have a bad day, but um, usually it's always couched in the, in the um, intent to help people. Right. I don't know. Clary speaks his mind more than anybody I know. And yeah, he's I'm, able to do it. So yeah. I don't really hide it. Nonstop Dre. Did he send you pictures? Not yet. Dre. You what know the hell Dre said he? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nonstop Dre for five bucks. Uh, but Chad, people don't steal from the IRS. They're just taking their money back. Did Chad get permission from the wife to drink that happy wife, happy life? Oh, Dre, he who used to live about a mile from where I'm sitting right now. I really hope you're getting plenty of action, define action however you want to out there in the Middle East right now. Well, that's why I, we don't know what country he's in. I don't know if he can even tell us. I'm, That's going to determine the women that are out there, whether they're going to sleep with them or not. And the guy still has this. I just want to see a picture of like, I, I don't want to get in trouble, but like send me a picture of the downtown you're in just, just so we get a, a picture with the place. He actually might've done that. And if he did, I'll forward it to you. But um, Dre, I'm glad you're doing better because uh, I don't think you were really loving your life here when I saw you last fall. So um. imagine what thin women will do to your life. Sam whiskey, 10 bucks. Hey Vlad, what is up with guys going to a baby shower these days? Is it considered a tax write off? I didn't know guys even went to baby showers. Have you ever been to a baby shower? I don't think they're invited. When's when no, it's I thought it's not. usually women only. Yeah. Like I could see the father to be maybe making an appearance, but I don't think men go to these. Um, so a guy, how could that can be, if a guy goes to a baby shower, how could it be considered a tax write off? The only thing I can think of is if the guy is a CPA, your tax preparer, he goes and gives you a gift, you know, cause he's a nice guy and then he can write that off. But beyond that, I don't know why any male would go to a baby shower. I've never, if been he works there. at baby gap, you know, yeah. like he's a, a, a an infant clothier, sure. Then, but yeah, yeah. You, could we could we just generally for common people to follow the advice? You can't pull tax deductions out of your ass. Would that yeah. just be a, a generally a good rule to follow? You can't make it out of thin air. Yes, I think some people read. I've ranted about this before. I think they read a little bit too much Yahoo Finance or stupid oh. shit they see on Twitter. <laughs> You guys, if you see something that's a sensationalist headline, it doesn't, it's not real. They're just trying to get you to click on it. So if it sounds too good to be true, it is from a tax standpoint, at least. So, uh, X Runner 50. Well, oh, did you just go that? X Runner uh, 55 for five bucks. Boomers doing stupid stuff. What do you expect for people who spent their entire youth huffing leaded gasoline fumes? I think yeah. it was the pot. It was a uh, well, I need to defend pot a little bit. Well, you know, if you do pot responsibly, then it can be your best friend. But yeah. I do think it's possible some of these boomers from the 60s maybe made it a bit too much of a lifestyle. So maybe you're not wrong. But. I was looking up the average age of the homeless in the United States and they don't have the data, but all the articles were about how there's a lot more older homeless, like 50 and up. Yeah, I wonder if pot was in their lives. I wonder. You know, we can put this on pot, but I'm going to blame it on harder drugs. <laughs> so. I, I will say alcohol and harder drugs, but yeah. um, I, I, you're talking about the baby boomers from the 60s. Like if you didn't quit that and it was the 70s, you're like, dude, man, come on. It's still 1968. And then you're in the 80s. You still yeah. doing that. Yeah, you're you're probably homeless now. Pretty much. Uh, quick shout out to Nuke. Nuke, hope you're doing well. Hey, Nuke's in the house. Yes, sir. I don't know how good of a salsa dancer he is. He posts not, the occasional not, video on. Does he uh, have a video? Okay, I'm going to see Instagram him. Instagram and yeah. yeah. Is it him dancing or is it just a bunch of people dancing? It's just a bunch of people dancing, but I mean, they look like they really know what they're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we were just at this 
this country dance bar right before this. And I was mm -hmm. like kind of mesmerized by the people that really knew how to do these types of dances. I mean, have I you ever like, seen me dance? No, me not the once. GFC? Yeah, no, I, I'm kind of curious, not, not in a adversarial way, but in a, a healthy spirited competition. I'm like, how good is nuke? That's also, I'm pretty good. I'm going to just based on what he's talked about with it, mm -hmm. and you know, he goes every Wednesday night. I would guess that Nuke is actually very he's good. He's up there. Yeah. Yeah. If he's going at least once a week, I'm sure he's up there. Yeah. But just real quick, I said to the candidate, I'm like, you know, I don't know. There's something about this scene that I find really endearing. It was just, you know, peaceful men and women, cowboy hats, just kind of doing their thing. I don't know. I just found it endearing. And, and you mean men and women not hating each other? Were yeah. Were women followed and shut the hell up and yeah. let the guy lead and the guy had to know what he's doing? You both yeah. put effort into putting something better together yeah. than apart? Yes, that's that's amazing what happens when men and women don't hate each other. It's shocking. It's just nice to see. Um. I think, you know what I'm going to do when I'm older? God willing, the GF is still in shape to do it. Oh, when we're old, we're going to dance. Yeah. I'll start picking up dancing. I don't, and I, I haven't danced consistently in about 15 years, but I'm going to pick up dancing again and do it regularly to make every one in my generation miserable that they failed and they can't do what we're doing at 80 years old. I would love to just remind them like, Oh yeah, I got some moves. Look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, are you by yourself? Uh, three divorces? Ah, it's too bad. Okay, I'm going to go and spank my girlfriend in the ass at 80 years old. That's what I'm going to do. I hope you do. I mean, that, that'd be something. So do I. Hank Clogs, 4334 for two bucks. But Cappy, words and math are hard. Yes, words and math are hard. You just, you know what? He just needs UBI. If we just had UBI, all of our problems would go away. Yes, I think somebody else mentioned UBI. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Yang. <laughs> The oh, Y2A problem, two bucks. The wrong Rangers won the sports ball championship. What? Um, I'm confused. Is so the, Rangers... the the local baseball team here is called the Texas Rangers, you know, named after the Texas Rangers. Okay. Um, All right. They happened to win the World Series last night. And, man, everybody went apeshit here today, which good for them, I guess. But I was just kind of like, fuck, I don't really like baseball that much. I thought your Houston Astros won two years ago or something. They actually won it last year. But, I mean, right. I only, I, I'm i just not really that big of a baseball fan. I, it's it's a little bit slow for me. I'm a, I know some of you in here probably like it. Claire, I can't imagine you like baseball, do you? Or, I like yeah. playing baseball. I do not like watching it, no. I can imagine, and I'd like to play baseball too. I mean, I just like bad European sports ball teams. So, how can you watch soccer though? That's even more boring. They're just kicking the ball back and forth. At least with the NBA, which is the same game, you get some uh, uh, some slam dunking. You get Co some acrobatics, is what I'm saying with the NBA. Couple, couple of reasons. All right, Clary, you know how big I am. You know how like this soccer is the one sport you can play if you weren't like built like a major athlete here, okay. you know, if you're just, you know, you're a little guy, but you're a little bit fast and you have some skills. That's the first thing. Second thing was that was really the only sport available to me in high school when I was in Africa because everybody else was playing, you know, basketball, these trees, uh, rugby, which I didn't know how to play cricket, which I really didn't know how to play. So I was mm -hmm. just like, all right, I'll just try out for the soccer team. So I just got into it. Okay. Uh... Kind of on that note. Non-stop trade, two bucks. Cappy is too short to even to ever be down on his luck. <laughs> He's got to have a book. There's a website. He's I do want to say a... Dre, Dre is a tall guy. Like I've, I've met him. Yeah. Isn't yeah. he like six, four? He's no, nah, like, Dre, no, you're only tall? about six foot tall. He He's wasn't like that. I mean, foot, six right. feet. I would like to be six foot, but Dre was no, it was his, there. it was his magical black penis. That was six foot long. <laughs> That's what it was. Dude. That's how he got the name nonstop. <laughs> X runner 55, five bucks at Atham. I don't know any high a hiring manager. Eco labs is hiring. I know regular workers. They like it going to help a fellow engineer. Yeah. If you guys want our buddy, he's, and he's yeah. finally recovered from like taking a hiatus and getting sleep. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully getting some exercise too, but he, he put his body through a little bit of hell there. He did uh, finishing off that last semester. I think he's still in your Atham. I don't know how you did that. That I just I don't know anybody else who could have done that. So what? Oh, huh? 
Well, who, who, you don't know anyone yes. else okay, that could have okay, done okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Clary, I know you did. You did. You did something similar. I get that. But how many years did it take you to do it? It took me three and a half because I buckled down and did it and got it the hell done because I hate it. Now, he'd had to do it for seven years. I'll grant you Yes, that. that's right. all I'm saying. Like, you know, I just – three and a half is one thing, and you deserve respect for getting it done. But, God, Atham did this for double. I'm just like, wow. I will. Here's another thing. He did chemical engineering. I did yeah. finance. And, yeah, some of the math and <laughs> statistics was hard, but it wasn't anything what Atham was doing. So it, it, it is incomparable on that on that stage, too. But Clara, you went to the Carlson School of Management, which I found my degree right there. I'm going to auction that off. I keep Please do. Me. That was okay. fun. That time you almost did that. Yeah, I should have done it. Then I wouldn't have to worry about it. Well, speaking of worrying, <laughs> Ray John, too Canadian. I want to ask out this redhead. Think her every night. Well, it's too late because you're putting her way too valuable. If you're thinking about her every night, you, you should have just asked. To... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say he needs to take that prison guard job because it's going to pay well. And I was just hanging out with a prison guard tonight, one of her friends. And yeah, you need to. Um, if he's if he's already got her, I think about her every night. It's too late. It you, is too late. You yeah, don't you, want to you put her eyes. way too more valuable than she actually is. And so agreed. Um, the agreed. the best thing, Chad. What is the best time to ask a girl out? When you don't give a fuck. <clears throat> Which is usually when. When you're already either when you're seeing somebody already or when you uh, no 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 you're right you're right yeah Just, when you when you let's say you're single when you're outcome independent when you're talking to many different women and it's just, okay right no that yeah. these are all true these are all <clears throat> conditions you have I'm talking chronologically when you from the point you see a girl to the point. That you're on the date, let's say two months from then. When is yeah. when is the opportune, the best time to ask the girl out? I mean, I was gonna say soon, but I think it's just immediately, right? The second you see her, yeah. You be like, look at that, come up with a line, go. That's it. And I then think you're, you're not right. wasting your time worrying about it. You're not, oh my god, how do I perform? You just like, hey, how you doing? You guys can't get too caught up in your head. No, nope. nope. big and small. You know who has the best line for asking out girls? Who? The great one. Oh, well, he has no uh, approach anxiety. I listened no. to his street or his podcast recently. What? He just, yeah. What's his line? Oh, I don't know his line. Is so he basically? Simple. You got a boyfriend? That's it. That's he all just, he's got. That's, that's all he said. That's all he tells you everything. You got a boyfriend. And right off the bat, she finds out, oh, yeah, she does. Or no, she doesn't. You say, wow. You don't Let have me to take waste you out. Da, da, da. Just that. What do you do? And then my technique is I like to get the hell out as quickly as possible. So like, boom, you ask him out. And then like, I'm on my way out. And I did this back in ye olden times when you gave out numbers. I just give the girl my number because she wanted nice. to call you. She'll call you. And like, yeah, give me a call sometime. That's now they do strategy. this phone thing, apparently, where you have to type in the numbers. I think I need to spend more time watching rule zero. <laughs> Ray John, two Canadian again. Would we ever do a meetup in Vegas invite only? Um, probably not. I, yeah. I'm, I, the not, not nothing against you, Ray John, but the past, Spurs. out of the past five meetups I've done, four have been autistics and spectacular. Um, <laughs> they have, um, 10 years ago, everyone was normal. I don't know what's happened. I have no idea what's happened. And so I, um, you know, if you see me in public, say hi, you know, but we're not hanging out. We're not going, we're, we're not going hiking. It's uh... So Clary warned me about this and I didn't believe him. I did a couple of minor meetups of my own, you know, just random mm -hmm. people. And a couple of them were just absolute, you know, the most spurgy of the spurg. Yeah. And I remember I called you and you were just laughing your ass off. And you're like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> nonstop Dre again for five bucks uh what's something that you guys always wanted but realized it's overrated once you had it for me it was being with two girls at the same time well shit Trey, that's more than Whoa, what i Trey. had good luck for you yeah Trey. what does he need our help for yeah why are you even asking <laughs> um do you have an answer for this something i always wanted to realize overrated once i had it um probably going to college 
That yeah. was in my mind when I was a young man, like boy, middle school, high school, like college, it was sold up as this thing. I remember at the end of my freshman year, I'm like, this, this it's just four more years of high school. I'm like, this fucking sucks. I have an answer you'll laugh at me for working mm -hmm. for the federal government. I was like, what the fuck is this? Because my dad did it. So I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm going to do it. Well, I was like, what? This is nothing. This is a bunch of losers. More so than the big four. I, the big four at least had some impressive people there. I mean, uh, I would still call it overrated, but working for the feds was even more overrated. God, yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of like something I've always wanted to eat as a kid or, you know, some like a toy you always wanted or some kind of thing. And you're like, eh. You ever have a cigar that you thought would be so good or a whiskey or something? Not really, because you got to smoke the cigar to figure out whether you like it or not. They could describe it with, you know, whatever, oaky tones. and Yeah. But you you won't know until you light it up and smoke it. So okay. I've never like looking for like, oh, my God, I can't wait. Um Maybe Wyoming was a little bit like that, where I was like, okay, mountains and all that. And then the people were just a bunch of sister fuckers. And so I was just like, all right, I don't like people that participate in incest or live in trailer parks. So Wyoming wasn't for me. But yeah, those are some letdowns. Two chicks at the same time, Dre. You know, boo hoo. Oh, yeah. Oh, poor Dre. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Jensen for five bucks. Chad, can you do an accounting of how much Dre has spent on short shows? It's got to be close to the GDP of a small country. You know, as Clary, <laughs> as Clary once told me, if you're if they're going to pay money for you to like, you know, say whatever, you just go right ahead. You know, <laughs> we make fun of Dre and Hatton Clogs, but, you know, you do forty two dollar super chats over um, that's that's 80 bucks that's a lot of money and you know what he has something else to say i'm Dre sure he does. does yeah not stop Dre. two bucks can i waste money on jokes because i'm different yes, yes yes you can Dre. yes you absolutely can <laughs> chad are you debt free i am debt free to the oh, extreme that is yeah. amazing dre catches guff from people when he tells him he's debt free well i would like him do. to say one we're gonna one more super chat from dre wow Wow. Okay, Drake. A meetup with Cappy is called a letdown. That's uh... <laughs> but but let me ask you this, Drake. Would you stoop to such a level? Would you? Be, ah, ah, stoop. Huh? Get it? Short joke. I got it. Would he stoop? Would he come down to my level? That's. Uh, my favorite the first thing dre says to me when i see him you wow you really are short like, thanks <laughs> asshole i'm not buying your starbucks whatever now uh last one i'm gonna read and then i really do want to get to this material we need oh to yeah i, mean, I can bed. go to bed um uh matt 720 says the spurgs watching right now don't know chad is talking about them that is a very accurate statement so <laughs> There's some okay. there's some legitimate criticism from the outside, like man, there's a lot of mental illness. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe not, yeah. you know, bipolar disorder, but yeah, there's definitely some people on the spectrum in this world. I don't know if social skills or conversational skills can truly be taught, but some people need to learn how to do that, and that's all I'm going to say. People need to get in fights on the playgrounds and not have their mom stop them. Yes, and you need your fathers. And you cannot. You have to stop being raised by single moms and your public school teachers. Agreed. For, that's it. Oh my God! I don't know why the autism. I I want to see the data on people who have autism or Aspergers and how many of them come from stable nuclear families. That's what I want to see. And I guarantee you, it's going to be like a 0.85 correlation coefficient that uh, shows Future you they book. are not. Future huh? book, maybe? I said no Future because book, no. no. I'd have to. I'd actually have to go and do a survey. Like a legit no joke one, and you know the social sciences are not going to do it because it's going to point to the need for stable fathers. They're just not going to do it. They're they're not going to do it. Okay. All right. Let us get to the material. We need to get Cappy the bed. So let's. I, I do want to. I like this topic. So there was an article from Accounting Today that came out on Halloween, which was Tuesday, just a couple of days ago. The title of the article is What the Tax Gap Tells Us by Jim Button now. Clary, if you had to guess what a tax gap is, do you have any thoughts? Initially? Well, based on the title, this is how much tax revenue does the IRS lose to noncompliance? Yeah. The IRS comes out with some kind of estimation that we should collect yeah. this much, uh, but they only collect that much. And then they estimate that is due to noncompliance or people cheating on their taxes. 
basically. Okay. All right. And it's a great article. I'll, I'll read just the first few paragraphs of it. And then I'm going to show you some graphs and everything, mm -hmm. but like um, the, there's just been a lot of chatter. I mean, look at us, we're sending money to what two different, well, a zillion different countries, but big money to like different countries right mm -hmm. now. So there's never been a, a bigger need for the treasury and the IRS to collect money from us plebs right well, now. Well, and the two trillion dollar deficit we run every year, I'd There's argue that. that probably. Yeah, but, that's you know, a what little do I bit. Know? I'm just in a. I just hate black people because I want to balance budgets. But go on. Yeah. We're up to thirty three trillion dollars in jet in debt at uh, last check. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, it's a good uh, subject to talk about. I'm going to read this part, um, and then we're going to talk about it. So. On October 12, 2023, the Internal Revenue Service released the long-awaited updated tax gap estimates. The tax gap measures how much the U.S. Treasury loses annually due to taxpayer noncompliance. Okay? To no one's surprise, the tax gap has risen since the, since the last IRS study for the 2014 through 2016 tax years, and the service updated estimates for the 2017 2019 tax years. The most current figure for tax year 2021 estimates a loss to the Treasury of $687 billion a per year, year per year, mm -hmm. comprised of the sum of these three components. Now, I'm not going to tell you how much each of these are, but I'm going to tell you the three components. Okay. When, actually, Clary, when you think tax gap, Clary, what do you think are the causes of it? You know, there's three, but just uh, off the top of your head, you know, what do you think causes the tax gap? Well, wasn't it established that it's tax evasion or tax fraud or people just not paying what they should, right? That's one of, uh, so uh, I, I'll just, I'll tell you. Well, no, I, I like playing the guessing game. Okay, okay. I, I, but... um, think about you, you. Uh, you it's tax time okay yes what are what are some ways i'm not saying we do this but what are some ways you can cheat the government if it's tax time tell me how cheat the government not yeah, not somebody, bundle expenses which is legal we're I talking mean, actual I, tax evasion yeah like what what creates this tax gap yeah. okay a bunch of bullshit tax deductions that you just pulled out of your ass under reporting that's a big under reporting under -reporting. yeah okay uh, wouldn't that be under underreporting revenues, and then they um, overreport expenses? So same thing. Like okay. you under you under recognize revenue on the return, or you over recognize the expenses. So oh, that's the, do the, the same, same thing. thing. That's okay. the first. Remember, three. That's the first one. You know that. What else? What are some, what are some things that some people just frankly don't do? They don't file. They just don't fucking file. They don't okay. file. Okay, that's and number two. And they owe the IRS. It's not they don't file and the IRS would pay them back. These are people that actually owe the IRS. And now they got to go hunt them down. Yes. So okay. that was actually the third one. Like there's people. So yeah, you you underreport your income, overreport expenses. You just don't even file. And believe it or not, some people actually file. They do everything correctly. But then guess what? They just don't pay. They just They're don't like, pay. They just don't fucking pay. So those are the three categories that contribute to this tax gap. Continuing and that, on. that was $680 billion? $687 billion a year. I mean, Hang holy on. shit. So Staggering. Is, I, I'm surprised the federal budget is this low. Uh, $17, $1.7 trillion. Hang on. I just wanted to figure out what percent of the federal budget. Here it is. Yeah. Okay. The proposed... Fiscal year 2024 budget is 6.9 trillion. So we're talking um 10% of 10%. 10%. Yeah, that's yeah. that's significant. That's very significant at these figures. So continuing on. The tax gap has been a renewed focus of Congress in recent years, and tax gap estimates have been used as much of the rationale for additional IRS funding and the Inflation Reduction Act. Passed in August of 2022. I've talked extensively about that. Mm. Um, details in the recent 24 page IRS tax gap projections research study provide a similar picture as prior tax ta gap studies and arguably support a more ramped up IRS to improve compliance. So, what's next? The tax gap provides the IRS strong data for both improved compliance programs on the one hand and service initiatives on the other. 
On the service side, the agency has been making much progress in the past year. I had to laugh at this part. It exceeded its 85% phone level of service goal in the 2023 tax season and is rapidly advancing its online account help. Just time out. There's no way that 85% of the people that called the IRS actually were able to get through and talk. To you somebody. said you said you you saw market improvement with market IRS improvement, but service. I'm calling bullshit on the 85% oh, okay. because this went from like 20. There's no way they went from like 20%, which it was to 85% in one year. I think that's okay. too big of a leap. So I have to All call right. bullshit on that. All right. um, anyway. It plans more progress in 2023 and 2024 with new business online accounts and enhancements to the TaxPro online account. But compliance enforcement has been slow to return. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in March of 2020, much of compliance enforcement has been on hold. In 2022, the service returned its local field collection and examination functions to be fully operational. Both functions have been actively growing through the aggressive hiring efforts. And we've talked about those. OK, so finishing up this article and then I got some visuals for you. OK, but local enforcement is only a very small part of overall compliance enforcement. Most of the heavy heavy lifting is not done locally, but rather in its, quote, campuses, which until recently sent millions of notices each year to taxpayers questioning the accuracy of their returns asking for payments on late balances and inquiring about non-filing. And I'll talk about this in a second. Um, in these functions, the IRS is still very much on hold. And yes, it is. It's automated under reporter unit, which is the CP 2000 notices, which I talked about has maintained a limited presence during the pandemic. It was far from the volume of notices that it reached 10 years ago. The conclusions from the recent tax gap study support the IRS increasing its compliance presence and turning back on the notice systems. Taxpayers must know that the tax agency is present. Continuing to hold off campus enforcement may fuel a different tax gap estimate when the service measures it next year. I have some things I want to show you. Well, any initial reactions before I... Sh um, I have a question. If the yeah. IRS is going to crack skulls and start arresting people and bringing people to court, then if you're not going to have any teeth in it, then why should anyone pay any taxes? We're going to talk about that. Oh, actually. All right. So that was yeah. it. And then my, my only other question is, would a sales tax eliminate this problem? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. I spent the last hour before I came on here trying to convince these dudes that we need to do that. Wouldn't you be out of a job? Yes. Let's still do it. So. Okay, this is a little tricky with the presenting, but hold on, share screen, do, do, do. share. Okay, good. Do, what can you see that, Clary, or is barely it barely losses due yeah. to non-firing? Non-filing. Let's just do been... this. People don't need. There to we see go. Us. Okay, yeah, yeah. Don't need to see us. People need to see us. Okay. So okay. The first thing I wanted to, I thought you would find this interesting. First, I wanted to show you, this is what the tax gap, they do these in three-year studies. Do you see how it's increased, you know, since what, 10, 12 years ago and how it's yeah. gone up every single year? So it is right. getting worse. I'm is really it, curious. is this, is this adjusted for inflation? Cause there's been a significant amount of inflation since 2008. So they did not mention that, right. but I think I, when I get into this right below, it'll, it'll clarify it a little bit more. I do think so. Right. So the first thing that does need to be mentioned in this article is that, yes, this is probably bigger than estimated. The stupid, and I will call him stupid. I did a whole early episode how much I hated him. The former IRS commissioner, his name was Chuck Reddick. In 2021, he said that he thought the tax gap each year was likely a trillion dollars a year, you mm -hmm. know, instead of the 687 billion or whatever. Larry, why is it probably bigger than we're thinking? Because it is. It is absolutely bigger than 100 than six. Well, the methodology of the IRS was very conservative. I don't know. They, they, it's likely more. I, I have no idea why, but just error yeah. of government estimations. It's listed right here. You've got oh. the international tax gap. I mean, do you think people living abroad? They're required to file tax returns. But if you're in like New Zealand, you haven't been to the U.S. in like 20 years and you're, you know, you're making a million dollars and, you know, from your business. You but you haven't gonna... renounced your U.S. citizenship is what you're saying. 
Exactly. But if you're okay. never going to go back to the U.S., what is what do they care? So you know? that that would be debatable whether you throw it into that gap because you're not coming back to the U.S. Right. And that's yeah. why, you know, they're saying like theoretically the U.S. should be taking that money, but they're never going to be able to. So that was the first thing with the international tax. Right. gap. So that's not there. OK, that's not there. Illegal activity. Do you think all these drug dealers on the street, which is, I mean, you know, who's going to file a tax return for is, that? Is this where they, the IRS says if you got any money through crypto yes. or drug deals or yeah, illegal yeah, aid, yeah. like, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That always makes me laugh because, like, you know, marijuana is legal in the state I live in and many other states, including the state mm. you used to live in. But federally, it remains illegal. Mm -hmm. So what you're telling people is, you know, well, you're not allowed to do this, but you still have to report it on a federal level. Right. Who the fuck is going to do that? Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. And then you got the corporate income tax, which admittedly, like, dude, uh, Amazon, Nike, whatever. Apple. You, Apple, like you what name they, it. Yeah. What are they called? The Dublin switch or the. Ireland. Yeah. The yep. Ireland something, yeah, yeah, uh, inversion. Inver yeah, inversion is a good word. Uh, like, in Ireland is a very, very friendly country to have like a lot of your international tax operations. Did, in. did you know Ireland, with its incredibly low corporate taxes, has a GDP per capita of about one hundred and ten thousand dollars per year? And within my lifetime, it was considered the armpit of Europe. It's amazing what happens when you lower taxes and you attract international investment. It's just crazy what happens. You researched this recently? Or? Oh, yeah. Iron, Ireland was called the Celtic Tiger back in the 90s. Because yeah. in, in the 70s and 80s, especially the 70s, they had, you know, the, the IRA and the bombings and this terrorism yeah. and all that. They said enough of that. I don't know what happened. I was too young to know. But there's a we're cutting taxes. We're sick of this crap. And then over the next three decades, they went from 60% of the European average GDP up to like 140, 150%. I'd have to update my numbers a little bit. But they now rank among Norway, uh, what's it? Uh, Sweden? Lichten, no, Sweden doesn't even come close. Oh, yeah. Liechtenstein, Luxembourg. Um, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one Switzerland? Of the, no, way more than Switzerland. I'm, it's a, it's an Arab Emirate. It's not Dubai. That's not that pricey. Um, it's not the Saudis either. What is there's a, there's a Middle Eastern protest, small little Middle Eastern country that yeah. does very well, and and Ireland's up in that range. Um, but yeah, and and a lot of it, not all of it, of course, but a lot of it is that they lowered their taxes, especially their corporate taxes, and became a an international hub. So a lot of, a lot of companies at least have a foothold. Like if you're going to set up a corporation in Europe, the hell, if you're going to set it up in Sweden, fuck those people, you're going to go to Ireland is what you're going to do. Yeah. It's amazing how just having a little bit of a better system there, like leads to that. But so yeah, corporate income tax in countries, foreign countries, they're way more friendly. And then this last one, I thought you would like, you know, crypto, the crypto <laughs> cryptocurrency. I tell you, man, uh actually maybe it is you think it's cutter or oman it might be one of them um, no not oman and not cotter um wouldn't be yeah we'll we'll have to look that up but it's interesting um but yeah cri back to crypto um i claire i gotta tell you like i keep my ear to the ground and all this they are just guns a blazing trying to get these crypto bros like trying to get whatever money they make because yeah, that what I'm trying to look at is how much money could they possibly make? Okay, so you got Bitcoin. Um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Market cap. Yeah. So Bitcoin is 670. So it's a trillion dollar industry. I Okay, I could that see. High. Yeah, I could see with the, all the trading going on. Yeah, there's some serious money being lost there by the IRS if capital gains short or long term. Absolutely. Yeah. So... Um... So anyway, it probably is lower than the 687, 688, uh, you know, billion shortfall. And uh, I wanted to highlight this right here. Like, Clary, what I hate this because this is going to like be a problem for not for you, because I do everything properly. I do everything right. for my clients, but they're going after S corporations and partnerships because okay. they're trying to say that like S corps aren't reporting, you know, the actual income that they're making because of the unique structure of it. 
I do everything above the line. Like I never cheat on S corps for you and for myself or anybody, but I just can imagine my clients and maybe even you one day getting a notice from the IRS saying, the prove IRS. To, yeah, prove to us that, you know, you made this money and we want to break down your expenses. I'm I got bit- my box of receipts right yeah. over there. I can't wait till like, all right, here we go. Box of receipts time. Let's go. You will be just fine, but do some of the other people I work with, which I take great pains to get them to back up everything they send me, I don't know. These therapists are not organized. What what, Organization is one thing. Purposely defrauding the government is another. When people set up as corporations, I understand that the, the IRS is concerned because it is a common tax tool legal that people use to lower their taxes which is perfectly Correct. fine you have every yeah. right to do that but within the people who who are part of the s corporation club there's your standard llc types who are like well i'm gonna write off my brand new truck it's like but you don't use it for business so you're saying it's that same old idiocy where they oh you and i talk business it's like no we didn't yeah and but they're gonna write all right so they're they're still looking for fraudulent tax deductions is what it is all right so if you can back it up and say here's the receipt here's what it's for and it's a an authentic expense you don't really have to worry about it correct but uh, can you imagine how what what a pain in the in the ass that's gonna be like no one's gonna get in trouble but we're going to have to spend time, you know, they'll send a notice throughout the mail. Say you get a, say you get something from the IRS that says, no. hey, in 2021, we noticed that you, you know, claimed X amount in travel expenses. All right. We would like you to, to um, prove that, to substantiate it. You're going to have to take time out of your day. Yes. You know, you're going to have to dig that up. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. There's lost productivity associated with this. And what? they're going to, yeah, I don't like it. Isn't but that comes with every tax system that is based on income, where we have this ridiculous uh job to prove our income and prove our expenses. It's horrible. It is. I mean, yeah. And, and, yeah so, I, but I, I, I don't know how it was going to be any. If anything, we've gotten a reprieve because the IRS was underfunded. So now, yeah. what we're just going back to audit levels that we had, say, in the eighties or nineties or even the two thousands. I'm a little bit concerned about that. And like I said, I, everything I do is I do things how they need to be done. I'm not a cheat. I'll never will be one, but I'm just imagining getting a slew of emails, you know, from my clients they are like, Hey, I got this notice. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to have to deal with, you know, cleaning the stuff up. Nobody did anything wrong. It's just going to take time. You know, so your co- your concern, it should be the concern for all tax accountants and yes. CPAs, yes. is that your clients are not Aaron Clary. They do not have a good. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. They do not have records. They do not have the receipts. Um, their accounting controls are non-existent or very because. So now you guys have to start babysitting your clients. That like, look, you need to save these receipts. Yes, like credit card statements. Okay, or you got to tell them one on one stuff like. That card is for business. That card is for personal. Yes. The two shall never cross paths type of things. So that is what you're, because now all of a sudden you're on the hook. Yes. Because like, oh my God, Chad, help me. I don't know anything. And now you got like, yes, because you didn't, it's not that they didn't do what you told them, but they didn't save the receipt. Like I have going back seven years, maybe even 10 of all my receipts and my tax returns. So if they come up, it's all organized. I'm like, yeah, here's the receipts. Here's the the pile of receipts are ready to go. What do you think most of your clientele does? Just throws away the receipts and I hopefully think you got an electrical just throw copy? that shit away. Oh, and geez. you know, it doesn't matter how much I urge them to be smart about this. I just know, judging by the way some of them spend money, and you know, I, I just I just think this is going to really gum up my ability to like run, you know, a, a, a well-maintained practice. And maybe I'm being paranoid about this, but I just really hated seeing that. You I know, we'll see. I can see it. Cause didn't you have like one client want to write off the purchase of her dog? Yes. Okay. okay yes. That was. <laughs> so you have to understand, I'm not dealing with, you know, financial experts on this. You know, they, they, they're just, they're therapists, you know, they're, that's not what their strength is. And that's okay. That's, they're not meant to be. That's why I have me here. But 
I can just see a few of them dropping the ball on this in terms of record keeping. And, you know, they're going to send out these random notices and then we're going to have a problem. So I just wanted to point that out. That's why I hated seeing this about the flow through entities. You know, I was just like, man, if they're really going to go after them, then this is going to really gum up. And um, now uh, continuing on here, because uh, believe it or not, this gets a little worse. Like, do you uh, do you happen to remember what I said about the three reasons that are causing the tax gap? Uh, yeah, the um, not paying, not reporting, and underreporting. Yeah, not not paying, not filing, not or filing. Sorry, basically, yeah. uh, since you like to play the guessing game, which out of the three, which one of those do you think is like by far the biggest, like egregious offender of the not 600? paying, not filing or under reporting boy i'm gonna the the people who owe the most are gonna be wealthy and i'm gonna say they have their act together so they're gonna it's gonna be under reporting i think yeah. they're fudging the numbers okay, yeah can you oh see, look at that look at yeah, me can go you see that oh, right look here at that. yep i yeah. can look at that so you see, like the the non-filing and underpayment are frankly drops in the bucket compared to the underreporting, which is I'm sort of showing you this to sort of back up what I said about how I can see them like it's frankly harassing, you know, small business owners, S corp owners, asking them to substantiate like random expenses. So I, I, it, is it though? Look, it's not the IRS's fault that we have an income tax, right? So right. they have to, and people do, because I see it all the time, like, oh, it's tax deductible, right, Claire? I'm like, no, you idiot, it's not. Yeah, like, there's a lot of more. You yeah. need a receipt. So, yeah. and, and I, do I like paying taxes? No, I don't. But I hate the motherfuckers who don't pay their taxes at all, especially if they're Democrats. Like, you know, my one buddy who who did real well as a realtor, didn't make his quarterly payments, then all of a sudden he had to find all the tax deductions. Fuck him. Fuck the Democrat tradesmen who are like, I'm going to take cash so I don't have to pay tax. Fuck all these people. <laughs> these taxes, you should pay these taxes. It, that's it. So I, I can. And what is the IRS supposed to do? You got to enforce it somehow. I'm surprised they're not dragging people off the jail or dragging them in front of court. Like they got to scare a couple people, don't they? So people. Uh, right. Like I'm not like in theory, like, you know, it's an overall concept. This is probably what they need to do. I'm not going to sit here and call them evil or anything. I'm just kind of lamenting that I hate that this is probably going to make my, you know, business. It, it's just probably going to be a pain in the ass for me because as somebody who truly does, and you know this, you wouldn't work with me if I didn't. It's someone who really does, you know, dot every I, cross every T, I... like we don't cheat here. I just think I'm going to have to spend a lot of time, you know, proving that it, I'm not. Yeah. Do you, is that part of your service? Like, did you tell these people that the IRS came in, you'd, you'd go to bat for them because well, you know, if they're not holding up there and saving their receipts and, and doing what you told them to do, what obligation do you have? Or would that just be bad business for them? Uh, well, I mean, it's bad business, but I mean, at, at the same time, the, the reason that's a great question is because it leads to me asking myself some things. Do I change my business model? Like, do I do I suddenly introduce like an hourly rate in case you get and I've always like charged an hourly rate for compliance related issues with the IRS. I just think we're going to get a lot more of them and I may have to just shift the way I do things. So. Mm -hmm. um as, as you can see from the gap like yeah you get some underpayment a little bit non-filing but yeah it really is the underreporting. so i think there's going to be a lot more scrutiny of expenses going forward a no. lot more no i i don't envy your situation because yeah this only means more work and more tedious work for you and it and it, you know what i almost think it's not going to be the tedium's not going to be working with the irs it's finding out where bipsy put her 2019 tax return and then didn't back it up digitally either. I mean, you know, you have like a an upload system or something like that. So at least you have it. But right. the actual the the or, or originating documents where it's like, no, this is the receipt right here. I mean, unless they're all digital, they're not going to be able. It's going to be a pain in the ass to recreate all that stuff. No, it absolutely is. So again, this is not meant to discourage you guys from starting your own tax practices. I'm meant to encourage that. I just mean, if this is going to happen, I want you to be aware of it and bake it into your business model. Hourly you, rates, just, yeah. You should start telling people like, you are going to save all, you tell them you're saving seven years of receipts. 
Seven years of you tax. Yeah, I am going to have to tell them yeah. that. Digital yeah. and paper and and no joke about it because like, yeah, there's an increased chance. That's a conversation. Look, it's no different than dating a girl for the first time. No, we're not getting married. No, I'm not having kids. Um, no, you're you're not going to live together. No, we're not commingling funds or having a shared checking account. It's the same thing with your clients. No, I'm, I'm not going to cheat on your taxes. No, you're not going to like fail to have accounting methods and controls. You are going to do these things. Otherwise, you're not my client. And so it's it's going to be a shift in the way things have, have been going for me and how I'm going to do things. So mm -hmm. just making people aware of that. So the second point is that just getting back to the non-filing, Clary, a lot of people are not filing these days. Um, and the IRS used to be able to rely on their computers to catch this. Yeah. But I mean, the system, first of all, it hasn't been updated since 1987. They're working mm -hmm. on that, but it mm -hmm. hasn't. Um, so I'm not going to read all this, but as you can see, the IRS has dropped the number of these notices that I've been talking about. And that's because, frankly, their computer system can't keep up with the number of people who mm. just aren't filing. They're just not doing it. Well, it's all good Democrat Zoomers and millennials who don't have to do anything. Because Did you said, did you hear the saying delusion is the solution? I never and heard that. That's what the younger people are saying now. Delusion is the solution. I'm like, ah, oh, what if you're going to end up like a homeless boomer? That's uh uh, had to be Zoomers. Um, so, yeah. And uh, uh, just to test your knowledge real quick here, what's the statute of limitations the IRS has to go back and, and question, you know, your uh, expenses or whatever? What's the generally? I, I have heard that it's seven, but they can go up to 10. It's actually most of the time it's three years, believe it or not. All it's right. only three years. And that's how all these people are getting out of it. Now, if you have potentially committed a tax fraud, like crime, as in Wesley Snipes, as in jail time, right. that will extend to six to seven years. But if it's just minor expenses, it's so I can start free. shredding my 2010 tax return now. Finally, I mean, what, how long do you want me to keep them? Seven years? I wasn't your accountant in 2010, but I think you're probably safe to shred everything up okay. to about 2015 at this okay. point. Uh, they they take up like two whole boxes now. That kind of like one. Well, you have other. such a small place. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have a small place. It's nice. It is very nice. Um, so anyway, yeah. So uh, people are just not filing and they're getting away with it. I already went over this, uh, so I'm not going to belabor it. But yes, the IRS will need to target small businesses. I already talked about that. Um, and, you know, as you can see right here, given the limited data the IRS has on S corporation partnership noncompliance, the small business tax gap is probably even larger. This part really made me ill. The majority of all S corporations are small, single owner businesses with payment and non filing issues, in addition to underreporting. Clary, you and I are what? Small, single owner businesses. Right. So I but we just... don't we don't have payment and non-filing issues. Who do you berate and admonish every quarter when he goes and makes his estimated tax payment so he doesn't have to worry about it again for the rest of the so we do that to you because uh interest rates in terms of savings accounts are currently almost at five percent. So you're better off sticking that money in a savings account for two months, getting a little interest, and then paying the IRS. Um that's all I'm saying. You okay, know, interest rates better. are that high. Maybe I will look yeah. into that. Hang on. I got to add that to my to-do list because I got to see what my interest rates are. And I'll talk to you more about this offline. Like, I really think you should do this. Like, don't pay them any earlier than you have to. Okay. No, if you said interest was 5%, then um, yeah, I think I will. I will leave it in the, because now we're talking real money. This it is would, real it would, money, man. Yeah, it, it would cost me like 20, 30 bucks just to agitate you. But now I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah. Well, in your defense, this has only happened within the last, it, this happened this year, you know, obviously interest right. rates were low and now they just, you know, raised everything. So yeah, look into it and we'll talk about it. Right. This part I wanted to spend a minute on, uh, Clary, uh, I think you were, you did the show with me when I talked about those 1099K reporting. Yeah, you were right. there when I mm. showed you how to get out of it. So the, this, the argument from accounting today is that the new 10 K, 1099K reporting should help people you know, then recoup the tax money. I disagree because the vast majority of people that are going to be getting these 1099Ks are people that sold a TV on eBay for $650, right. not people with, you know, 
six figure, seven figure, like revenue numbers from small businesses. So obviously I won't read this because I did a whole stream on it, but you know, now they're going to issue these to anybody who got over $600, whether it was related to a business or not. So this is just going to cause a big problem. It's going to jam up the IRS. It'll be a pain in the ass for me when my mm -hmm. clients never knew they got a 1099 K. So I don't agree that this is going to help the situation. No, it will not. They just made a very complex system even more complicated. Exactly. And, you know, as you can see, they ask all these questions like, how are they going to even do that? And my answer is they're not going to do it. It's going to be a disaster. Um, then I just had this. I won't read this again, but voluntary compliance has actually been fairly consistent over the years. You can see the gap. It's about between 84 and 85 percent which in other words, the vast majority of American taxpayers file when they're supposed to, and they file for the, you know, they, they claim all the income they're supposed to claim. Most people are not cheats. Okay. But this article is saying that like voluntary compliance may be headed for a downturn because no, they the young generation has been brought up to be responsible and do their duty. They're very responsible young kids being brought up today. There's no way that's going down. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I'm not going to read it, but that was one of the like tangential like arguments that they make is that, you know, people just aren't going to give a shit, essentially. And so they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to combat that. I don't know how you can combat people, how you can make people care about something. Sales I don't think tax. They, they got to eat, right? They do have to eat. I'm not kidding. You know? See, I, I'm, I'm one thing I do respect the younger zillennial, millennial Zoomer types is they're the ones like, no, we're not commuting. And no, we're not we're not working your crap job anymore unless you, like they're they're keeping their feet down. They've affected more change for social policy change by forcing corporations to stop treating employees like shit. Now, of course, yeah. they've gone and bow down at the at the dick of diversity and inclusion, all that. They may be able to get the IRS to blink. It's not the IRS. They're like, look, do you want money? This is an absurd and complicated. Uh, compliance is way too complicated for your average 23 year old. All right. Your average college graduate who's a moron can't do this. And now if you'd like to get paid, you better come up with an easier way for the average American citizen to pay their taxes. I, I, who, I, I, I'm hopeful, but it, it may be they're like, yeah, we better do a sales tax because this this isn't going to work. Yeah. Well, uh, just real quick, this this gap or this graph was showing that there was a major gap and, you know, interest and penalties and fees that they were able to collect from people. Obviously, when we had the pandemic, they were very forgiving about those things. So they right. did lose, you know, seven billion dollars in revenue, which I mean, yeah, that sounds like not a lot in the grand scheme of things. But the IRS needs everything they can get in the no. Treasury. So. And really, just to put a bow on this, they're actually fairly cynical about this, you know, despite everybody despite them saying, you know, they're going to go after S corps and, you know, the IRS got 83 billion in in funds, you know, from that inflation reduction act, I was kind of surprised to see that his conclusion was that, uh, that things aren't going to get better. You know, they're just going to gum up everything. Wow. That's not a, <laughs> yeah. he didn't exactly go on a limb there. Okay. All right. This brave man predicted things will get worse. All right. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, Wait, I want to. There we go. So at the end of the day, I I don't know what's going to happen. The only thing I'm pretty sure about is it's going to be a bit more of a pain in the ass for those of us who are in the industry. And, you know, you just have to urge your clients to keep good records. And again, I've said this a million times. There is a shortage of us. If anybody's making your life hell, you fire them. OK, so do you think podcasters are going to have a more difficult career going forward? Or do you think our jobs will mean the same? You don't think it'll be more difficult? Well, seeing as you're the only professional podcaster here, I think you're going to have a very, very good uh, next 10 to 20 years. That, that is such a sad thing that that's a thing, a professional podcaster. Like <laughs> that fact, that's a thing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, um, any more super chats? We do. Yeah, let's uh, let's wrap this up. We um, got to get you to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I got to listen to Nerd Rotic and The Critical Drinker, and it's a Gundam. Uh, uh, Sam Whiskey, 10 bucks. The TV show Louder Milk is based on Cappy. Louder Milk? I Have you ever heard of that? I don't know. Never that. even heard on it. 
Louder milk. I'll look it up later. Sam, if you're still here, let us know what uh, louder milk is. Right here, I'll just look it up right now. Oh know. yeah, go ahead. Louder milk. Probably one of those the, it sounds like shows. a sounds like a '90s band. Louder milk, 2017. Uh, Sam Louder milk is a recovering alcoholic and substance abuse counselor with a bad attitude. Although he has his drinking under control, he discovers. Yeah, this has got um Ron Perlman or not Ron Perlman um Ron Livingston. Oh, from um, the office Band of Brothers Office Space. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I might I might give it a watch because I like that actor. Did you know that back in the eighties, the Minnesota Vikings had a place kicker, and his last name was Loudermilk? I'm not oh, bullshitting you. That's great. Uh, the Vikings, huh? Then did they just lose their quarterback? Yes, they did. Probably for the year. Run. That's just too good bad. for you, dude. Good for you for keeping. That's up all with I heard about talk. Aaron Rodgers. The only because they both got injured out, right? Yeah, and Rodgers yeah. was lost within the first five minutes of the season I, about a month and a half ago. I do pay attention to Minnesota stuff because I hate it so much. And I love <laughs> I love watching like on Facebook, even friends of mine who are not Marxists, um, they're like, Oh my god, da, 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 da. and I'm like, Did the sports ball not go well today? And <laughs> and they say, Oh, get older, they know I'm right. They all like, Yeah, we know it's but you but you know it's something to do. I'm like, okay, let some other people bang your wife. I thought I was the only one who still had Marxist friends. Yeah. Um, no, I don't have I don't have Marxist friends. I, I got rid of all of them. Yeah. Oh, 1985 for two bucks for the fancy beer fund. That's for you. You got your. Thank you beer. very much. I don't think Clary's had any alcohol since 2018. Two and a like half that. years. No, no, that's five years ago, like 2021 or so. Uh, hey, Mariah, Mariah. Hey, the one yeah. girl that listens to us, uh, <laughs> five bucks. I don't know how you, how you did it, Chad. Accounting classes suck the life out of it. They're supposed yeah. to, they're not yeah. supposed to invigorate you. That's boring. It's pretty damn boring. Yeah. It, I mean... That's why you get paid the money, Maria, Mariah. Sorry. I'm taking trig pre-calc and human accounts payable human uh, human A and P. Oh, I don't know what that stands for. Um, Trig precalc and human something. Hmm. And they have been a joy by comparison. Yeah, I, I wish I could give you some kind of like you know mentor advice here and tell you, oh, it's going to get better. I'm very sorry, it's not going to get better. Is not in clarity? school anyway. No, not in school. When you get to the real world application of this, it gets a lot better. But in school, I mean, this is just, oh, anatomy and physiology. Oh, biology. Okay. Yeah. Mariah, what would be easier? You making $12 an hour trying to make your $3,000 a month rent or just sucking it up now, taking your beating and then making $50 an hour? And do, working remotely from a, it, it's it's the hard way and the really hard way. You know what? I actually do have maybe a little bit of advice, Mariah. Yeah. For these boring ass classes, I'm just going to keep it real with you. You're probably not going to learn a lot because it's too fucking boring. So your only strategy here is to just do whatever you have to do to make good enough grades on whatever exams they're going to give you. I was going to say papers, but there's not a lot of accounting papers. So just exams, you just get through it. It'll be over. And um, then you just move on with your life. So just basically be a good test taker. And then you don't have to think about this again, because even on the CPA exam, if you do become a CPA, it's a lot better than sitting in a class. They actually tell you how to pass the exam. So. Yeah, uh, I looked it up. It is Cotter. Cotter's the one, and it's not even that good. It's like eighty-eight thousand. Uh, the U.S. is seventy-six, so they're not that much. Monaco is two hundred thirty-four thousand. I was surprised. Well, Cotter just had the World Cup, so maybe they. Okay. Anyway, Ray John, Canadian too. Aaron, are you in Vegas? Nope, not yet. I might fly there one day. Well, uh, you're getting there soon. Winter time. Yeah, no, I'm getting. When are you gonna summer. head west for the season? Early, early December. Okay, about a Late month. November, it's coming up. Uh, got to do Thanksgiving before Thanksgiving with the family. I told my family I'm not doing Christmas. I'm going to Vegas. I ain't doing no. Last time I went to Wisconsin, minus 15 effing degrees Christmas Day. No. Love my parents. I don't you love you that much. 
So it snowed in Chicago on Halloween and there was this, all this like uproar, you know, in um, social media. Oh my God, it's snowing on Halloween. I'm just okay. like, you're not used to this by now. No, uh, not those new immigrants you got coming from equatorial uh, climes. That's uh, <laughs> stealing, stealing your high end fragrances at Macy's. I wonder if Macy's has a diversity and inclusion <laughs> department. <laughs> I just want to give this uh, gentleman a shout out, Alex Patino. It's good to see you, man. Thanks for coming I by. I wonder if he even drives. So he's he's always on the. You notice for a truck driver, he is always <laughs> in the show. Like, is he really truck driving, or is he just like a bot? Is someone program? Oh, I know we're going to come up with a bot called Alex Patino to be a truck driver. I do have it on good authority that he joined Jack Napier's you know program, the the fitness program, oh, and had good. some good success okay. with it. So yeah, yeah. he's real. I'm going to read this one because we usually don't get compliments like this from JJ. I love watching you two. You're both smart men. I love the banter back and forth of good friends. Well, thank you. Like, you know, we are smart. We are very smart. Yeah. Ray John wanted to tell you something. Ray John, two, uh, two Canadian bucks. Uh, don't worry about the perv super chats for me anymore. Well, until what? You're high again? <laughs> <laughs> they don't bother me that much. I mean, I don't care. We're getting paid. What are we? As long as you don't say, you know, I really like little boys, I think we'll be all okay. That, that'll be fine. Yes, indeedy. I'll read this real quick. Ben Crap just helped my 76-year-old dad drag a deer out of the woods. Epic. Awesome. That's pretty my, sweet. My old man made it up Harney's Peak. You know, I, I forgot to ask you. I know it was a week or two ago. Did your dad have a nice visit? He had too good of a visit because he already started scoping out senior living and then he scoped out a church. He attended Bible study. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're out in Belfouche or you're like Rapid City is not far enough away. I need him further away. And I told him, like, you could go down to like um, Edgemont. Hot Springs is a little close to me. Belfouche would be ideal. I'll set up for. Um, for uh spearfish atham looked this up but he's like i like rapid city i'm like wait wait whoa whoa that's where i do my shopping and i hang (laughs) out like so he had a grand old time and um yeah he there's a a trail that you drive up remember the curvy trail we went up and and then you you look at mount rushmore when i point i'm like dad there's harney's peak we climbed this look Oh, that is Joe. Yeah, we did class. So he had a grand old time. And then he proceeded to beat my ass in pickleball. And he was like giggling in like, because he knew he's good. He's real good. And he just beat my ass. And I think that was the peak of his visit that he beat his younger son in pickleball, of which I've never played. But he, he put some spin and some heat on some of those hits. And I'm like, yeah, he knows what he's doing. So. The only question about what you just said is that if he did scope out senior living facilities and he did move there, would he bring anyone with him? Well, that's what I, 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 I'd imagine he'd have to, unless she passed away and he's like scoping out for like when maybe she inevitably is a demise, but he could just as well die before her than her die before him. That's fair. But she, she, I do know because of family reasons, he will stay there. Uh, he's not coming here until she passes away, which we don't wish upon it. But, you know, people are right. getting old now. So uh, but when she does, good Lord, I don't think the body will be cold by the time he's already <laughs> signing up for a lease. And just, you know, and I was I've never seen anyone take to South Dakota that quickly. I'm like, what? What was this? Why did not we why did not we grow up out here if you liked it so much? What the hell were we doing in Milwaukee? Well, it seemed like he was so resistant to visiting you, but he. Did it? What old so. boomers are? Yeah, I'm old. I'm stubborn. I don't want to have any new experiences. Then you say, "Oh my God, this is amazing!" Oh my! God. I wonder what the senior living situation is out here. <laughs> a couple quick shout outs, then we'll kill off the super chats and we'll call it. Um, the real Uncle Hector has good advice. Real world practical application is where you learn accounting, not the classroom. Truer words have never been spoken. Don't worry about the boring classes. Just get through them. It will get better in that respect, I promise. Hey, look who's in the house. What's up? Do you see who's in the house? Hello, Bacon? Bacon, yeah. Oh, hey, Bacon. Yeah, Yeah, I was going to do the Bacon. It's good to see you. I've been traveling. I haven't had a chance to listen to your band of um, Motley Crew of Friday night uh, (laughs) compatriots there. 
but I will be back in Chicago next Friday night, so I look forward to it. I hope to catch it. Um, and also, Atham did want to add something. Uh, he said, it's not hard wow. to beat Aaron in anything except bowling. I suck at bowling. We'll have to go bowling. Anytime we want to go hiking, Atham. Any... Do you remember the time? Hey, remember that time Atham was keeping up with us until he did it and he was a cripple in the last mile of the hike? Good oh, times. I had Good some times. trouble handling that one. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, it was his pain. I was like, <laughs> It, to be fair, what was that? A 15 mile hike? 15, yeah. And Athen was, he was neck and neck. He was fine. And then I think he just pulled a little bit something. It was the last mile. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, he, he would still blow most people out of the water. To be fair, that was one of the hardest hikes I've done, but I did enjoy it. It was, it was a fun. Time. Well, we got plenty more for you this year. <laughs> Hand clogs, two bucks. Video games are good for you, Cappy. They are. I, I spent. Four hours playing video games today. It was nice. Kind of relaxed. Diablo 4? No. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which is pretty hard. Nonstop Dre, two oh, bucks. The Cotter World Cup uh, Stadium is very close to me. All right, so he's cool. there or maybe he's in Saudi Arabia or where. Because Qatar's just a little little peninsula yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. He's definitely in Qatar or Qatar. Um, <laughs> okay. he, he did tell me that. Yeah. So. Uh, Rage on two bucks. Look up. No, Layani Lay. She's a good economist. We already did this one time. No, um, is she actually an economist or is she? No, she's a like very gross porn. elderly, disgusting no. porn starlet. No, so I don't want to. No, you can't get us twice, Ray John. Maybe she is hot for Canadians. Uh, Zyrax, <laughs> two bucks. Can you still get a refund if past the three year limitation? No, you cannot. Um, unfortunately, you can only get it within three years. However, as I told you, normally the IRS can't go after you if it's been three years. But if you committed enough egregious tax fraud, it becomes criminal and they can. Mm -hmm. So let that be a lesson. Clary, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I missed it. It had been a while. Um, Anything I know you finished the the book. Do you want to yep. hawk anything or? Yeah, I'll, I'll just promote that there real quick. Uh, so a world without men and an uh, analysis of an all female economy is done. I am waiting on Rolo Tomasi to finish the cover, and the GF to finish the last three chapters of the book because she is my editor and she's listening right now. She, do you know right. what she did today? She made um, roast beef with potatoes and parsnips and garlic cloves and uh, carrots. Yeah. She did enter the three chapters. Can you believe it, Chad? All she did was slave with the kitchen. How dare she? Oh, so just, uh, I know, man. practically abused. Um, anyway, uh, so that is going to come out. I, I just got to wait for Rolo to get me the cover because he has the pages, the GF to give me the edits. And it, depending on Amazon, it could be published in five days really but, I, I was gonna yeah. ask you if it would be out in time for like thanksgiving or christmas oh, yeah like yeah gonna... well it i've done my job <laughs> i'm johnny on the spot i'm done i got i got done on the 28th like the did what i said i was gonna do and now it's other people that i'm waiting on as, <laughs> as isn't it always the case in the world um so yeah that but what it is is i got sick of frank i'll just be blunt I got sick and tired of female lip uh, ever since I was seven years old, having teachers uh, and every woman in my life, even loved ones, telling me that women didn't need men and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, prove it. And they're not going to do it. So I went and I pulled the data from the Department of Labor to see what would an economy without men look like. And you girls are so fucked. It's not even funny. It's it is a yes. Women could live without men. I, you know, I, oh, that's the policy. It's a, and 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 then I looked at the data. I'm like, oh, you're so fucked. <laughs> you're so fucked. It's not funny. You so need us. And then the book goes on about the ramifications of what happens if men keep leaving at the rates they're leaving now. And I won't be giving it away, but you're so fucked. No. I look forward to reading it. Uh, I I have a copy of it, and you know how I have a copy of it. So when I get a chance, I'll, right. I'll take a look at it. Uh, I wanted your 30-second opinion on something before we call it a night. So this mm -hmm. is episode number 49. Should I do anything special for episode 50, or is it just no. like it? No. no. Okay, no. I didn't think so. Yeah. No. 
Well, Clary, thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be back doing it. And uh, I will let you end the stream with the requisite send off. We should hang out. When? Probably soon. 